I look weird. I, I really know. need to get my hair done. I'm looking weird. So mm. James at the bottom now. James has got Phoebe's space. And at the bottom. I just look a little but bit. We all know I'm on top, innit? Has my camera been inverted? Am I over there? Yeah, no, I no. thought I looked so inverted and it's really annoying me. Camera physique says the right way around. Right, we're ready to go. We're ready to talk about some training stuff. Yeah, but what to do with training? All right. Different training methods? Every... Yeah, right. Just get oh, into it, in. yeah. I'll just get into it. Just get into it. Ready? Yo, what's going on, guys? The Physique Coach Coaching Team are back with another episode of Coaching Your Physique. we got Coach James down there. This time we got Coach yeah. Peter over there, who gives us a great women's perspective. And today we're going to talk about training. So training is something that all three of us love. It's what kind of brings us all together in the gym. Um, it, It's what gave us the love to look like we look. I mean, do we love training more than we love the way that we look, though? What comes I think from? there's yeah. no better feeling than training. People yeah, say, oh, it's no a chore feeling. going to the gym. It's not a chore. It's like the, it's the only thing. Yeah. yeah. Like, how a lot of people don't like training. How can you not like training? Like, just go and smash him weights. No, I feel like when you first... Eating. When you first have a, like step foot in the gym obviously I remember I didn't even I feel like every girl's the same they're not too like excited about going to train because it's more of like an anxiety thing but once that's shrugged off the shoulder and you're like you get into it and you realize that no one actually cares what you're doing that's when like the love begins well it did for me and then so when did you first start training James I started training in lockdown. All I could do was uh, dips and pull-ups. And I just fell oh, over yeah, it. I, I was about 15, 16. So, um, yeah, I started doing dips and pull-ups. And I ordered a lot of mass gainer. I don't know if you know serious mass. That's how I first started getting into it. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I went from 59 kilos to 80 kilos in about four months. Yeah. And I was, I was covered in these stretch marks. Yeah, my face was up here, but I put on a lot of size, um, uh, and I loved it instantly. And I think if I didn't have that initial, like, horrible, dirty book, I wouldn't be where I am now. I think that actually did do, like, a world of good for me. Obviously, I wouldn't recommend that, but when I first started doing it, I just smashed it off the back. And I fell yeah. in love with it instantly. I, I remember when I first started training, so I was in, it was on my 17th birthday, so... My, I, I basically, my dad used to train. My dad was pretty hench back in the days. Um, not hench like to our bodybuilder standards, but for, for just someone you don't. Let's remember that. Fucking, I'm 27. You guys are younger than me. Back in them days, it, it's not like a, I'm not old, old, but still. Back fitness, in them days. Fitness has only started booming like in recent years. Like even when my dad was training, there was exercise for less I think that's where he trained and, and that was the first kind of big gym and then like pure gyms started opening up left right and centers but back then there was no pure gyms everywhere like there are now like it wasn't as, as a big thing as it is now the sort of fitness thing so I used to see we, we we actually had a gym um in our school as well we got one built and we'd be able to go in and like have sessions in the gym at school and I remember just like we used to horrible i don't know how the teachers let us do that but we would be on the chest press machine and we'd be just doing one rep max on a chest press machine like a machine chest press and everyone <laughs> would just be trying to who can do one rep like the heaviest on this chest press machine um and it was me and a guy called aaron scow i remember and we'd literally just do one rep but we do it's a horrible it's horrible for you just do whatever you do to get it up so that was my first experience of training in, in like the school gym and I always, all my friends then started going to the local leisure centre, started going to Pudsey Leisure Centre. After school, they'd all go and, like, train in this leisure centre gym. And my mum my and dad wouldn't let me go. Um, so I was like, fuck's sake. Aww. Yeah. Uh, and then I used to always see, so get back to the point, I used to always see my dad come home from work with a pump and he used to like pose for us in the in the living room and stuff like that. So we'd get home from school. My dad would come home from the gym at like eight o'clock, like he'd go after work and he'd just like be doing poses and stuff like that. And I'd be like, yo, I want to be bigger than my dad. That was like my whole reason to start training. So then gets to my 17th birthday. My dad's like, right, 
on my 17th birthday, let's go to the gym. So then he took me to exercise oh, for less on so Kirkstall Road, which is now JD Gyms. And um, he knew one of the personal trainers in there. You had to be 18 to sign up. So, But he knew one of the PTs in there. So they just kind of said that I was... I was 18 years old. So yeah, then I went and started training with all my dad's boys at the gym. I think my first session was chest, which is funny because chest is one of my shittest parts now. But my first session was chest. And um, yeah, I just remember like I was shaking after it, like my chest was killing <laughs> my dad's boys. And that's that's basically where it all started. And then from there, I was going two times a day. So I'd go first thing on the morning before college and then I'd go to college and then I'd go back again after college and train again. And I just, I, I used to scran out on Oreos. So you go Poundland and you can get fake Oreos called like Neo or something. Do you know, do you know the ones I mean? I was like, I know exactly what you mean. A pack of like 30 or whatever. Yeah. Loads of those. And I'd just be sat in college just eating Oreos just to get calories in. um, And a chocolate milk as well. And I'd just be down in chocolate milk. <laughs> and that was well, totally the um, original Sam Sula. But yeah, I was original Sam Sulek before it was all going on. That's what I was doing, Oreos and chocolate milk um, while I was in college. So that's where my whole where training journey started. I just wanted to be bigger than my dad. What about How you? Are you do, how are you breaking that down then if you're doing two sessions a day? Were you like, I don't know what I was doing. Bro. I was just going into the gym and just training. I don't have a clue what I, I didn't have no structure. I just train like, right, I'm yeah. going to do a bit of chest. I'm going to do a bit of back. I'm going to do a bit of legs. I actually didn't train legs because I was like, oh, I play football. So, like, I don't need to train legs. Because <laughs> I still played football. I used to, When I first got into the gym, I used to train, like, I used to love training upper, which is quite unusual for a girl. Probably why it sort of hench up top now. But I used to, like, smash upper probably, like, three times a week which is just stupid and like I, I used to hate like so I just purposefully avoid it and I guess that's the price I pay isn't it now having small legs but yeah I think everyone's <laughs> strongest body part is what they enjoy training most yeah when they start the gym because yeah when you start the gym and you've got no structure you've got no overall like training program that's going to have frequency of different body parts throughout the week just going in the gym and training what you enjoy that's how you become really unbalanced yeah and, that's and I think the soul and you, everything else. Um, you enjoy it more because you, you're seeing like the results. So as soon as I was seeing like triceps, my um, shoulders, delts, I was like, oh my God. So then I trained it more because I could see it. And then I did it more and then neglected legs even more. And then my legs got skinnier. And then I didn't do them because they were so skinny. I'd just do upper body and then it just got worse. But flip that now. I'm training like like lower three, even four times a week now. Um, That's because I got like, you. Yeah, alternative. As soon as, between, soon as, like, you, as soon as we met, we met, and then obviously you was in competition prep when we met with some I don't know some shit coach. Um, <laughs> I had to take over the shit because he was a shit coach. I'll say right now, come fight me. Um, she should have seen the meals that she was eating, bro. I had her eating tuna and shit like tuna and fucking school dinner vegetables, like it was horrendous. Anyway, <laughs> I I took over that prep, but I said, look, your you too your upper's too good and your legs are lagging way behind if you're gonna do bikini. So I took her off like straight away. I, I I took her off upper. I said, right, you're doing one up a day a week, and then you're doing you're doing legs the rest of your training sessions. Are we froze. Wow. Did we freeze there? Did you guys freeze? It went a bit. It went a bit glitchy then. I think we're back on now. Yeah. So she. So yeah. So now she's on program three times a week. But you got to make sure you bring up your weaknesses. Um. You want an overall package of a physique. You don't just want strong. Yeah. Uh, like you just become so unbalanced, and then you end up having to kind of fix that later on. Like me, I've not trained shoulders now for five months, four months. Not not properly. I've not had a proper shoulder session in like four or five months. I've just been training chest, 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 chest. Even like coming down in prep, I was just trying to stay away from my shoulders because I knew my shoulders are a strength and I don't really need to make them any bigger because it doesn't actually make your physique look better when you get your better parts better. You need to have an all balanced look to to look it's all about proportions and stuff to to look the praise that you can so yeah um but let's well, talk if your shoulders are too dominant it'll take away from other muscle groups aren't it like your chest for example even in training as well 
even in training, like you have to change around your movements. So I like to change around my movements so my shoulders don't get involved because they're so strong and so dominant. They want to get involved with every with everything, and that's kind of where we see in leg training as well. A lot of people are quad dominant, so like they feel everything in the quad. So it's finding those mm -hmm. movements to really isolate the areas that you yeah. do. So, so this is where we can kind of transition onto training programming. How would we actually try to talk about like training programming then? Because we just said all this shit's wrong. How would you rightly like initiate a training program? Um, how would you go about it, James, setting up a training program? Well, for me personally, I'm a big believer in high intensity training, but that's only if you can perform it correctly. So if you're first starting out in the gym like a lifestyle client, I wouldn't put you through that more just for how to be approached, doing like your basic three sets of 12, just getting a steady base on. And then from there, once you've got a bit more experience and your body can take that intensity, start throwing that in. That's what yeah. I think. But yeah, to start with, I'd, I'd maybe have a few drop sets, maybe a muscle round, but I'll keep it simple to start with. Let yeah. your body adjust from that. I think your first ever training program, it could be just as simple as full body three times a week. Yeah. Be as simple. Yeah. Because one thing as well is you do not understand intensity to really push your body parts to the limit as well yet. So your body will not need as long to recover as my body does because I know how to really isolate and drive weight through and be as intense as fuck and tear down those muscle fibers. And I can push it to the limit because I'm mentally locked in there. Yeah. Whereas you can't do that. So it's going to take me longer to recover. Whereas when you're first starting, you're not going to reach the levels of intensity and the muscle engagement that you will do later in your training journey. So full body three times a week will give you enough frequency on each body part. Just one back exercise, one chest exercise, one shoulder exercise, do an arm superset if you want to do an arm superset. Just cover everything three times a week um, with compound movements. Well, remember, newbie games as well. You're like a hyper responder, aren't you, when you first start going to the gym? Yeah. Mm. And then that's the, second, nice. the second training split you should be looking to go to then is probably an upper lower split. So that kind of separates it like a little bit more. So you go from full body training, full body three times a week to then maybe training four times a week. You might do upper, lower, rest, upper, lower, rest, rest. And that covers kind of phase two of your training journey. Phase three of the training journey, then this is the book. But the thing is, we're talking in long time scales here. That phase one could last a whole year. That phase two could last another two yeah. years. So now you're in three, four years into training. This is where you want to be thinking, okay, right, now I might go push-pull legs. Again, we're keeping it broad to all muscle groups. Um, and we're trying to hit frequency throughout the week where we're hitting chest multiple times a week. We're hitting back multiple times a week. So that would just be push, pull, legs, rest, push, pull, legs, rest. Just repeat, push, pull, legs. Yeah repeat because you're getting enough frequency throughout the week you're getting rest throughout the week you should now know intensity a lot more as well um but again we're trying to build a good base of a physique so we don't need mm -hmm. to focus on isolating areas so that push pull legs could last you a, a good another three years because... yeah i used to do um i did that push pull legs rest i'd say for a good two years and only recently with you um because I've learned actually what intensity is. I've had to have two days on, then one day off, because otherwise my body is just in bits, like yeah. absolute bits. And I'd, I'd much prefer it this way. Like before, if I was to have that split, um, I'd be itching to get in the gym. Like I'm missing it, but like I'm so glad that I've got a rest day tomorrow because the past two days I've absolutely hammered it. So and I think that only comes with like experience and like no matter how long you've been training for, if you're not hitting the right exercises with the right amount of intensity, then there's you're not like maximizing the gains that you can have ultimately. Yeah. So we round that up. <laughs> well, time to time we go. Phase one of training. Phase one of training is gonna be three times upper body a week. Phase two of training, you then might go on to upper, lower, rest, upper, lower, rest. Phase three of training, you then might want to go to push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs, push, pull, legs. Phase four of training is now your advance. You're definitely over five years of, into training now. You're definitely over five years into training now. You'd only switch to this earlier if you really started getting into bodybuilding that little bit earlier. Um, But 
just for someone who's normally training at the gym, this could be five years down the line. And this is where you want to really lock in on your weaknesses and improve in certain areas. So we call it like the the bro split or like the pro split, as I like to call it as well. So you might see pro bodybuilders using this split. We train chest and we train back and arms. Then it might be or delts and arms. And it could just be these splits can be all over. Yeah. Because, your training maybe your chest but then you might need to top up on your triceps you might need to top up a little bit on like this or that you might even throw calves in there and it can get all over the place because you start to really niche down on what you need to improve on so mm. yeah the, it, it, i've it, started I've um, doing glutes and delts together now so like on my upper days i'll just chuck a few like three exercises for glutes as well just so i can get an extra day on in with glutes as well so it's just all about like nailing down and pinpointing what specific um like muscles you need to work on muscle yeah. groups but you've got to have a good base first because if you don't have a good yeah. base, it doesn't matter it doesn't really matter so before you start refining and really focusing on how this annoys me a little bit when guys are like oh how can i grow so something that i'm trying to grow my upper pecs how can i grow my upper pecs and I'm like, bro, if you've got no chest as it is, you don't need to be worried <laughs> about how to build your upper pecs. You just need to be worried about just building a chest in the first place. You don't need to be targeting that specifically because you don't have a chest in the first place. So just focus on the whole thing and just see how it goes. You don't need to be saying, how do I do the fucking lateral head of my tricep and stuff like that. Just train triceps. Just don't get that refining on stuff until you have built a very very good base and then you can start refining and build, bringing up little bits that seem to have lacked from your overall base training 100 i think people try to rush it as well that's just that to me sounds like you're just trying to rush the process as well mm. you know you need you need like you say you need to get that foundation physique and that can take years mm. it takes up to five years can it to get your full foundation yeah and training's a skill we've got to remember training's a skill because the way i train now is the, the directness that i have in training now is so different to when i first started because i've now acquired that skill i've learned how to really like target my muscles to the point where i can lift i can me and phoebe could probably do in the exact same way i could lift hardly anything but i can make it hurt yeah like you see me today on hamstrings three pins down and I will bite in my top and I will tears almost coming out of my eyes and I'm cramping in my hamstrings because I know how to really shift that weight through my hamstrings. So you've got to acquire that skill and that skill takes years and years to master. And it's, it's, it's not as easy as people think of just going into the gym and training. You'll gain more muscle when you acquire that skill. And that skill might not come until years and years down the line of practicing and practicing and practicing. It's just like everything. You have to practice and practice and practice. You'll get more efficient at training and then you'll see more muscle growth. Um, So I actually saw a post on Instagram the other day. Um, who was talking about it? Someone was talking about it, an influencer person. What's he called? James Smith PT or whatever he's called. Do you know what I'm talking about? The, no. blonde, the blonde guy. yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't yeah, like yeah. To look down and stuff like that. He's yeah, no, in yeah. Australia or something, doesn't he? Um, I'm Gordon sure... Ramsay of uh, the gym, what people call him. Yeah, he said it. something like, uh, this is how the years of progress goes. Like in the, your first year, you'll have a loads of progress. In the second year, you'll have a little bit less progress. In the third year, you'll have a little bit less progress. Then you'll have a little bit less progress. We're five years into the gym. And, and, I was, and I was like, okay, I kind of agree. But I don't agree because my best progress has probably been made eight years into training yeah. like yes, I had good progress right at the start and then it started to slow down and then it started to slow down but then guess what happened five years in I acquired yeah. a lot of training properly and then my progress shot up again so it's not a case of every single year it gets harder to grow muscle yes it does you'll see a, dim a diminishing return like over the over the first few years but then you acquire that skill and learn how to properly train and obviously lock in your diet. You might even get a coach at that point. Now you're four years in and you'll see that progress start to skyrocket again. The mm. gym is endless progress. As yeah, well. I think people um, get really complacent 
of their own knowledge, don't they? Pe- people get people think you know everything. Yeah, and it's like the best guys in the world have have coaches. There's always more to learn. There's always something more to refine. It, it, I could go speak to someone in in pure gym or JD gym and, and they think they know everything. And it's like, <laughs> but I bet you don't know. You you don't train. You don't know how to train like me. I can say that to your face. You you do not engage muscles. Your muscle fiber recruitment is not the same as my muscle fiber recruitment, and I can tell you that for a fact. You think you know everything, but your muscle fiber recruitment is not the same as my muscle fiber recruitment because I've acquired this skill over years of educating and understanding my own body and all that kind of stuff. And that's why these a lot of these people look the same because mm-hmm. they're not willing to practice and learn enough to acquire the skill to become better. They just go to the gym and do the rounds. Mm-hmm. James, I feel like... You go, go on. You go, oh. you go. I was going to say, I feel like for you, James, has there ever been like a time in your training where you genuinely thought, yeah, like I couldn't know anymore if I tried? Or have you always been open to like, more knowledge? I've always, always, always wanted help. I think really? It's, it's, arrogant, it's arrogant now. I think, yeah, when I was about probably a year into training and, you know, you go for that phase where you get like the, the extra small T-shirts and you walk about like at the family function, like look at me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and then, uh, but apart from that, as soon as I actually got into bodybuilding, I was like, yeah, I, I need to listen. I got, I got a coach when I was the first, uh, on my third paycheck ever when I was 16 is when I got a coach. So oh. I've been, I took it seriously from the get-go. Yeah. I had my first coach at, oh God, I've got a story. This might be a story time. Was Ricky Moore, your first coach? Oh, he was my second coach. My first coach Oh God, do I want to go into it? It it was a guy, he was local, and my mum knew him, and I trained in his gym, um, and I I worked in his gym so when I got back from America, um, so I was living in America, I kind of got back, and then I just didn't know what I was doing, dropped out of uni, I was like, I want to do this gym thing because that's all we're doing in America, we're just banging gym twenty four seven, so I was like, I don't want to do this uni thing anymore, I want to get hench, I want to like be a personal trainer or whatever. So I worked in this local gym and this guy said he'd uh, prep me for a competition, the owner of the gym. So I was like, all right, cool, let's do it, men's physique. Um, and he just didn't really coach me. Did I had oh. bad coaching experiences. He didn't give me a diet or anything. He was just like, you make make sure you eat chicken, rice, whatever. I was like, well, do I need to be doing cardio? Whatever. He's like, you don't need to do cardio. So I didn't do no cardio or whatever in my first prep. And then I remember, I was just like, I'm not lean enough. Even me who knows nothing about bodybuilding and at, at that moment in time, I was like, I'm not, there's no way I'm lean enough. Like everyone else is doing cardio. I'm seeing it on Instagram. All these people doing cardio. Why am I not doing any cardio? Surely I, I should be doing cardio. So then I started doing cardio and I used to go to the gym early in the morning, open it up and do cardio before he got in. And then when <laughs> doing cardio, yeah, on the Stairmaster, it comes in early. And he's like, what are you doing cardio for? And I said, bro, I'm going to be honest, yeah, I'm I'm not lean enough. Like, I need to be doing cardio. And he's like, I told you, you don't need to do cardio. You're not listening to me. And I said, bro, if I'm going to be honest, yeah, you've not coached me at all. I've created my own diet plan. You've just said, eat chicken, eat rice or whatever, and and do no cardio. I'm I'm not ready. Like, you've not been coaching me. You're saying you've been my coach. You've not done fuck all. And then I walked out. How long of a time period was that over? Was that like, how long was that? a good few months, maybe three months or something like that. So then that's when I got in touch with Ricky Moore. And I think I was about maybe like four weeks out at that point. So I go to Ricky and I'm like, Ricky, this is what I've been doing. Um, Like, where where do I go from here? And Ricky just kind of said, that is a bunch of fucking bullshit. And then he called me like peanut butter man for like the first few months because I was just smashing peanut butter. I didn't know anything different. Like I just thought peanut butter was like a food that's, bodybuilding day so like i was smashing peanut butter and stuff like that like on an evening oh that's well cute ton of fats, and I, I didn't have a clue at that point so he called me peanut butter man for like the first few months <laughs> and then he kind of sorted out my diet he gave me a proper bodybuilding diet and rick is old school so it's like yeah chicken rice and like eggs and proper old school um so i did that started getting on cardio started doing cardio and then went and placed i think i played second at my qualifier Oh no! How old were you? Oh, no, no, actually, actually, no. I did the qualifier with the other coach. I played second there, and then it was the British Championships, like six weeks later. 
So I dropped him for that. And then I've joined Ricky maybe like four weeks out from the British, British Championships. And the thing is, back in them days, it's UK BFF. And that British Championships was everything to everyone. That was such a big show back then. It was so different to how it is now. That British Championships, you had to qualify. And everyone in the UK who was someone of someone was there. That's where we seen like Samson Dowders turn pro. They did Samson Dowders turn pro at British Champs. Um, I know definitely like Hollins Head, Luke Sando, like those that they there was one pro card every single year given out and you had to be the best in the country to get it it wasn't like it is now um but anyway i was in junior men's physique at that time so no one who finishes second in their qualifier usually has a chance at the british championships because if you can't win your qualifier there's no way you're doing nothing at the british championships you're just going for a laugh but i was like i'm fucking going all out for this and then there were about 40 guys on the stage that day, junior men's physique, placed third. My goal was to just get top 15. Um, so the guy that beat me, uh, I, I, he's, he's called Elliot Robinson. Probably know him. Big on Instagram and that. No. Maybe, you know. Maybe was, it, Ro- was it Ross in that show as well? Ross was in that show as well. Um, Isaac Francis as well. Yeah. Was the OG boys. But anyway, my goal was to just beat the guy I was like, as long as I beat the guy that beat me in my qualifier, I'm sound. I'm sound. Yeah. So I was Have like, you ever stepped on on no. stage with Yemi? No, 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 no. Yemi's Yemi's only been around. I hadn't seen Yemi doing it for that long. I don't know if he did. He didn't... Uh, I thought I thought I heard you say he's stepped on stage before. I must have been somewhere else. No, no, no. I don't I think he's pretty new into everything. Yeah. As as I know. I don't remember seeing him back in like 2017 and stuff on stage. But it was you Zach Ainsley was in that show. Yeah, Zach Ainsley. That's when he was like big, probably height of his influencer status. But anyway, top fifteen gets called out. My name gets called in the top fifteen. So I'm like, sick. I've made it top fifteen, and the guy that beat me in that qualifier didn't even get called for the top fifteen. Zach Ainsley, yeah. Zach Ainsley, Instagram influencer, big boy at that time, didn't get called in the top fifteen. So I'm like, yo, I'm in the top fifteen. I was cool. I was like, yo, I'm fine with this. Like, I'm fine. I'm top fifteen now. Like I said, there were 40 guys. And then they called the top six, and I get called in the top six. I'm like, you're fucking lying. Like, <laughs> I buzzing. I was like, you are lying. I'm in the top six. Um, And then, obviously, they start calling sixth place. Fifth place. I'm like, nah, I'm still here. <laughs> in my mind, I'm like, nah, I'm still here. Fourth place. I'm still here. No way. And then they called me in third place. And I was like, no way. I've just finished third. At the British, and that was a big look at the trophy. We don't get trophies like this no more. We do not get trophies like this anymore. This is a heavy ass, big. This is the best trophy I've gotten. It's from my first ever season in bodybuilding. I miss them days. I miss them days when it was like that. But anyway, we kind of got the topic there and just gone on like a personal story about my competing history. Um, but yeah, second place was Isaac Francis, and first place was Ross Allen. We are the OGs. We've been doing this from day. <laughs> How long ago was that? That was 2017. Oh and then God, 2019 is where everything changed. That's where two bros You 19 then when you stepped on stage for the first time? 20, I think. 20? 20, yeah. Yeah, but it all changed after that. 2019 was when two bros came in and then started giving out pro cards left, right, and center, and so many pro shows, qualifiers, all that kind of stuff. It just started getting like everyone started getting into bodybuilding. But anyway, we went off topic there, didn't we? We were talking about yeah. training. <laughs> can't help ourselves. Have we got anything else to say on the topic of training? We can title this somewhere else. We can title this the loose personal competing story and a bit about training as well. But yeah, yeah how well for the for the people, I would always say. It's weird when you first go into the gym, it's awkward. You'd want to be in the gym for about half an hour to an hour. And then when you get more advanced, it would be like 15 minutes or an hour and 20. And then when you get more advanced, it almost comes back down again. So, what would you say to someone that first yeah. starting out in the gym? Where would you, how long would you say, like on average, like an hour? Just go in there for an hour. Just go in there for an hour. Some of my sessions are 45 minutes now. Yeah. Well, well that's what I was going to say. If we showed our legs now and we told you we train it for like 40 minutes a week, you'd be like, sure. That's all we do, isn't it? I do legs in 40 minutes. But that comes with skill, that comes with skill acquisition. 
Yeah. That's that that's what we're saying. That comes with skill acquisition. As skill acquisition gets better, you acquire those skills of training. You can then train for less amount of time because you can absolutely demolish yourself within 40 minutes. I went in the gym the other day and I was training, I think I trained back. This was like yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. And I come out and Connor's like, What's this part time? You've been you've done half a session. I said, Bro, you have trained with me. You know that even though I've just been 40 minutes straight in my back my back is demolished in those 40 minutes yeah yeah you don't need to be training for too long i used to um when i used to when i just started off training i'd be training legs for like an hour and a half or two hours and i would not feel a thing i would not feel a thing i wouldn't wake up sore i'd just be doing the movements but like now looking back I wasn't actually, I was just moving from A to B. I wasn't actually thinking about it. And that's that's what's really helped me. I can do one set, one leg set on leg mm-hmm. extension and I will be fucked, so, like, so badly. We in the same, we? And how many sets do we do on legs? We'll do, like, four or five working sets on yeah. legs to go home. And yeah. And we'll walk after, like, four or five sets. And you, but Awful. you put a like, training program for someone on, like, four or five sets. That's yeah. Trust me, if you understand how to properly train four or five sets for legs, you, that's all you need, and you'll be fine. But it's it's just muscle, uh, my muscle connection, isn't it? Once mm. once you hit that, you've hit the jackpot. Yeah. What um what muscle group have you guys found the hardest, my muscle connection wise? Mine used to be legs. My mine will always be quads. I think hamstrings and glutes have improved so much this year but i think there is always going to be a weakness in your body and mine is the quads mm. yeah what about yeah. you Dudley? i struggle to activate my chest that's why my chest is not good because my delts would overtake on them on those movements so i'd just be yeah. moving it from a to b i'd be moving heavy weight but a lot of that would be going through like my front delts and that's why i've got absolute wham front delts and they just take over from my chest so that's why I'm backing off on training now. And really when I'm doing my chest movements, I'm making sure I'm recruiting those those fibers, like making sure I've kind of got that first and then I know where it is. And then I can kind of lock into that and stay on that path. I can stay on that path instead of just moving from A to B. I'm really thinking about, okay, yeah, I've got it there. I'm just going to stay in that line. Um. So yeah, chest, yeah. what about you? Side delts. So I'm double jointed in both my shoulders. So I have to just Ew. drop the weight and go. I can get a rear delts are fine. Any overhead press is fine. But for the side delts, it's I have to really, really just drop the weight. And like, I have to close my eyes, man. I have to just go like really lock mm. into that. But everything else, like my chest, I'm the opposite to you, My chest, I, I can I'm pet bouncing right now. I can <laughs> press is fine. Hammy, hammies took a while to come, but now they're on point. Same with lats as well. I think once you've got it down and you actually, I think it's tempo training. You're just slowing it down and actually thinking about it instead of just moving your weights. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like when you told me to like count the negatives and that that's when I started to really develop that connection a lot more. Because a lot of people just slam it down, don't they? Up and down. Like yeah, you that's the like people like benching and stuff and they'll go, ah, and then they'll go. Yeah. yeah. And they'll bring it back up. Ah, and they'll go, ah. Bro, <laughs> you fucking just letting it go for like that's that's the whole the whole part of the movement matters. Control, control, own the weight. Don't let the weight own you. That's 100%. what you're doing on every single movement. You're controlling up. You're controlling down. You're not just going and then letting it pull you back up and then going again and then letting it pull you. You're just totally missing. Heart. I think the perfect example of that is Nick Walker. Have you seen it? He does incline barbell with sixty kilo on the bar. I think that says it all. I mean, he, he can move five plates if he wanted to. He does one plate aside. Exactly. It's, it's crazy. Pull, pull back your training. You can't... I, I, I kind of say this sometimes as when I see people in the gym, maybe next to me doing the same exercise, maybe on dumbbells and using the same weight as me. And it's yeah. kind of looking at them like, bro... Who's doing that? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm seeing people not maybe like the same, but maybe like a little bit less or whatever. But I'm like, bro... I'm double your size and me and you are moving the same weight right now. So if you think about it, do you not understand that you're probably doing something wrong? Because 
you're not that strong to be moving the same weight as me. The difference is I'm recruiting muscle fibers and you're just moving it to be. That's the only reason that me and you are moving the same weight right now, doing the same exercise, because you're moving from A to B, but I'm focusing on moving muscle, like recruiting muscle fibers. So pull that back. Don't try and just ego lift and move weight for the sake of it and to look big in the gym because no one cares. No one fucking cares. You, if you look big, you look big. Yeah. The end. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the end. That's pretty much we've all got to, what we've got to say anyway. So we'll round it up there. Talked a little bit about training. Kind of went on a rampant about my history with stuff. Maybe we'll do a full background episode if anyone wants to hear a little bit more about our person. I think it'd be good, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I've probably got loads of stories from my time in the bodybuilding industry. Maybe we could just do one as well where you guys question me about my kind of experiences over my 10 years of doing this. Because things yeah. have changed a lot since you guys have got in the industry at like a fresh time, but there was so much more before. Have you ever done high volume training, like five sets of 20? No, not that high. Never. That's like... what I first did. <laughs> Marcus Rowe, as long as you're recruiting muscle fibers, it fucking works and you can recover, it works. Like, end of the day, just train a way that you can recruit muscle fibers, high reps, low reps, whatever. Just make sure you're tearing your muscles, and that's how we'll sign out. So, that's been it from us today, Coach D, James, yeah, Bebe. If you do want to hear more about our yes. stories, then just drop it in the comments, let us know, and we'll. We'll do a little few interviews for each of us so we can talk some personal stuff. But peace out. Yeah. Put to play exactly what we told yeah. you. Learn that skill, get that skill acquisition, and then you'll get big. Stop just moving from A to B in a bit. <laughs>